But God, he strategically gives us the word. That is the purpose of Sundays. That, that is the purpose of us coming together as an institution and fellowshipping one to another so that we can build each other up. This, this is, listen, it's, it's, it's not a relation, or excuse me, it's not a religious thing, it's a relationship. It, listen, it, it's, not, it's not just about being here at a certain time and, and this person doing prayer and this pe- person doing offering and this person. It's not about that. It's not. It is, literally, it is literally a time for us to get in a position to learn how to be a better example. I'm, I'm just trying to help you. It's, it's, it's literally about us building up a relationship with God to where I, I don't have to always call on the leader. I don't always have to call on the intercessor. You, you need to learn how to intercede for yourself. Now, I, 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 didn't hear the whole, I didn't hear the whole testimony, but you, you didn't have time to call somebody and say, I just got in an accident. You, you, you didn't have time to do that. You, you had to move with a suddenly in your spirit and expect God to do the suddenly. When you, listen, you, you can't, <laughs> you have to get in place and get on one accord with God. You have to. You have to. If you look at all that's going on in the world, it looks crazy. It, it doesn't make sense. And it's, guess what? It's not supposed to make sense. But watch this. It shouldn't make sense even more to us, but it should make sense. Did y'all catch that? It shouldn't make sense, but it does. And I'm going to tell you why. Because what God is doing, he's letting us know that we have the authority. That's how I knew I had power this morning, Evie. When I decided to choke myself and say enough and that thing flee, that told me that I have power. That, that means I can, I can tread on the serpent's neck. That, that's what that told me. All right. Sometimes it just takes for you to say, you know what, the blood. There's, there's healing power in that. So I encourage some of y'all, just, just listen, reactivate your faith. Pl- plug in, charge up. Th- listen, the, the same way you do your cell phone, same thing to your spirit plug in charge up get listen but and, and here, here's 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 something you gotta plug in because you can't receive the download if your phone's not fully charged you you can't receive the newest update if your phone's not fully charged because the update is so much greater it needs full life to be able to receive so in order for me to receive my greater, I need to be charged up. I, I'm, listen, I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm just trying to, listen, God gave me a different outlook on Hebrews 11.1. 1. We've been saying it for years. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He said, now apply English grammar. He said, put a comma. He said, now faith, comma. What does that do? It separates but causes a relationship. But now it causes a break in time. So now if I have now faith, it lines up with right now blessings. If I have now faith, it lines up with right now healing. If I have now faith, it lines up with right now breakthroughs. Some of y'all just need to just take a comma in your situation. I'm trying to help some of y'all. Some of y'all just need to put a comma, cause a break in that thing, and then watch this. Move the period up some and say enough. Ain't no need for a semicolon. We don't want no more run-on sentences. Just move the... All right. Some of y'all need to go back to school and learn what your punctuation marks mean. I'm trying to help y'all because a period means it ends. After the period, it has to have a new beginning. You can't keep the same mess and move it over. So if there's a period in place, something new has to go there. Amen. Who you doing offering? Praise. Come on. Y'all prepare yourselves for offer. I'm just, listen. Some of y'all, I dare y'all to start writing out your problems and put commas and periods in them. It sounds crazy, but I'm trying to tell y'all, when you start seeing God move on your behalf, because he's crazy, and he's doing some crazy things. So I got, my, listen, my faith got the line up with what he's doing. I'm trying to tell you. If you want to see what God is doing in the spiritual realm, it, you got the line up naturally. Praise the Lord. Come on and do this offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessings, everybody. Y'all enjoying yourselves? I know I am. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, you know what the deal is. Go in your pocket if you got it. Amen. 
<laughs> All right, so y'all do know the cash app, dollar sign, school of light. Uh, I have baskets right here. We're going to pass this around in Jesus' name. And, you know, just whatever the, the Lord placed in your heart to give, you know, give. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pass this around. Oh, sis, can you uh, get us the mighty lines, please? Thank you. Any testimonies going on today? While we're Amen. Amen. Any testimonies? You got one? Amen. Well, God bless you, everyone. God bless you, everybody. How's everyone doing today? You blessed? We blessed by the best. Amen. Because we all know that God is the best himself, and he made us the best. I just want to give a little, little sh quick shout-out to uh, School of Light Church. Amen. amen. Give a little shout-out to my brother, Apostle Moses. Amen. amen. A shout-out to his wife, uh, Regina Griffin. Amen. The first lady. Amen. amen. I'm, I'm just excited this morning. Because, you know, I came in with the courts of praise on my belly, man. Let me tell you something. Because I wasn't going to I wasn't going to sit down on God and just not give God the glory because after what he has brought me through. You see what I'm saying? And as a matter of fact, to make this official, watch this. See that that's all that's the only thing I know how to do at the moment, which is make it official with the praise in my belly, with the praise in my feet, because I know what God has brought me through. Because let me tell you something. You see the glory, but you don't know the story. Hallelujah. On, my God, my God. My, oh, my goodness. <laughs> man, I'm just excited. Let me, let me get through it with the, with the story, man. Let me tell you something. When, when you're in a situation where you got stopped in Burlington, New Jersey, I went to go cash my check. I came back. It was a cop, like six or seven cops, pulling up on me like I did something bad or something like that. So... I looked at the brother, I'm like, I don't know what in the world you talking about. What in the world you saying something about some guy that tried to steal and mail out somebody's mailbox or something like that? They said they got a phone call. They, they thought it was me. A guy dressed in black. So I walked down the street with a bag and a Bible in my bag. The only thing I have in my bag was the envelope that I got from my job. So I told the couple, I ain't know nothing about no envelope. You got the wrong brother. You know what I'm saying? It was six cops and I'm by myself with the sheriff department out there. Like it was something serious. This lady recorded it on her phone. She was like, you all right, brother? You all right? I said, I'm good. I'm good. But one thing that I realized is that I was covered by the blood of Jesus. Because, see, listen, the devil, what the devil meant for bad, God meant it for the good. He meant it for the good. So it was six or seven cops coming out to get me, right? But then I got the heavenly host, the angels surrounding me, protecting me. And I have the angels fighting on my behalf. And the angels started ministering to me, letting me know that God was on my side despite what I went through. See, you may think about it as something small, but I saw it as something great because God was there with me. So what I, what I just want to do is I just want to give God the praise because it could have been worse. They could have beat me with night sticks. And then I could have went to the hospital. But thank God for his protection. Because if it weren't not been for God's protection, I guess they would have beat me with night sticks. Because, you know, you know when they beat you with night sticks, like back in the 60s or 70s, where us black folks, where they was racist at that time, right? And they still racist now, amen? That's why we say black lives matter, amen? Because let me tell you something. Let me be honest with you. Let me be honest with you. I'm not a racist, but I know who I am as a black man. Because I know my history. I'm like, don't be pulling that stuff on me. But I put a Holy Ghost on you. I allowed the angels of heaven to come down and get you. So don't fool with me. And it's times I ain't even got to say nothing. I say, Lord, get him. Get him. Get him. <laughs> but let me tell you, I just thank God for his protection, for his keeping power. Amen. And I thank God that I was able to walk home without any bruises or nothing. Because I tell you what, me back in the day, I probably would have fought back, honestly. I probably would have. And that probably would have went to jail. Probably would have went, you know, got a few five charges on me for fighting a cop. 
Because let me be honest with you. I don't want to bring this up. I hate to say this, but I don't want what happened to George Floyd happened to none of us in here. Let me be real with you. Let me be honest. Can I be honest? Because let me tell you something, man. I'm tired of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With the, with the mistreatment, the misjustice, and all of that stuff, I'm sick and tired of all of that, to be honest. Enough is enough, man. Sometimes you got to put your foot down. You got to put your foot down and just stand up for who you really are and who you really are in the kingdom. And you got to stick up to that devil's face and just tell the devil that you ain't playing no games anymore with the devil. And just let the devil know that you're going to bow down in Jesus' name. You tell them demons, tell them witches and warlocks, they say, wait a minute, I'll bind you in Jesus' name. You ain't coming up in here. That you ain't coming up in my family, my loved ones, none of that. I'll bind you in Jesus' name. You better sit down by the blood of Jesus. All you got to do is just tell them to sit down with the get down. Don't get up. If you get up, I break your feet in Jesus' name. And sever your head with the word of God. Because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. I'm done. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God for that testimony. In this uh, climate that we're in right now, uh, I praise God that you are here in the land of living with us. So praise God. We've seen stuff in the news, get people getting beat for less. So I praise God for that. Hallelujah. Everybody ready to pray? Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you are a God of mercy. You are a God of grace. You are a God of everlasting love. You are a God of second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chances, Lord, Father God. I thank you, Heavenly Father God, that you have blessed us, Father God, to once again come into your house, Father God, as a community, Father God, but more importantly, as family, Lord, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we are family in Jesus' name, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you will bless this money, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God, by a hundredfold, Father God, for your work, Father God. This ministry is not about self, Father God. This is for your namesake, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord. So I pray, Father God, that you will bless this money, Father God, that will be multiplied like the fish and the loaves of bread, Father God, to do your work, Father God, to feed a multitude, Father God, to, uh, to grasp territory, Father God, and the spirit, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. Bless those who have given, Father God. Bless those, Father God, who had a heart to give but could not give, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, Father God, that you will increase their, increase their vaults, Father God, and bless them with much, Father God. Let their cup overrun in Jesus' name, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have words of encouragement by our very own brother, Kenny. Good morning. Good morning. Terrence made me put my hoodie on. I'm a goon for Jesus, right? Let me take this off. Stop playing. Let me take this off. Stop playing. But, you know, I'm going to piggyback what my brother said. Because sometimes we feel like Jesus is sleeping when we're in a boat in a storm. You know, when, when, when that water was getting in the boat, they like, Jesus, wake up. Because the water was getting in the boat. But it's something he saw that the disciples didn't see. They was worried about the water getting in the boat, but not really worried about what was causing the water to get in the boat, which was the storm. He wasn't really worried about the cops. He was worried about the storm that developed to bring, how many was it, six? Six cops. Try to get him in his flesh. Try to get him in his flesh. So sometimes when you're going through a storm, you know, don't worry about the water getting in the boat. Worry about what caused the water to get in the boat, which was the storm. And Jesus knew that. Jesus why I said, why y'all waking me up? Peace be still. If I put a comma after peace, it's like he almost told the disciples peace, then told the storm, be still. 
Peace, be still. Were you at peace when they came at you? His peace made them stand still. Because Jesus said we going to the other side. So you got to worry. You, you, you don't have to worry about what's in between. You got to worry about when you get there what you got to do. Because through every wilderness process, through every boat, through every travel in the storm, there's something waiting on the other side. Jesus went through the wilderness and conquered it. Jesus went through the Garden of Gethsemane and conquered it. Jesus died on the cross and conquered it. Jesus went to hell and conquered death and sin. And he's the keys holder. He's our blueprint. Everybody in here going to get attacked. You're going to get attacked. You're going to get attacked. I'm going to. We're all going to get attacked. Because this movement of God is different, y'all. We know we different. A lot of us is unchurched. You see me, I look on church. I talk on church. You know, I ain't, I ain't been in church all my life. But I know Jesus called me for a purpose. I know when Jesus tells me something that, that, that I got to obey it. Amen? No matter what wilderness process you're going through, no matter what storm, no matter it look like you're facing death, count it all joy when you're going through various trials. Because at the end, you're going to receive a key. I remember Brother Mo uh, talked uh, uh, about a video game analogy. He said, you got to pass level one and to get to level two so you can learn how to fight the uh, enemy in level three. You know what I'm saying? So when you're going through a hard time, don't think like, oh, the devil's attacking me. I need prayer. I need this. No, you're going through that because God is trying to take you through a next dimension. God is trying to take you through a level of suffering that you will, your maturity level will go up. God is trying to take you somewhere like I've been waiting right here. You all the way over there. The key's right here, though. But you got to make it here. Amen. So tell yourself sometimes peace. And tell the storm, be still. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace and be still. Amen. Um, at this time, we're going to have our sister, Christina, give our financial tip. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You might want to take a moment and put your hands up and just say, God, I receive the financial tip. God, I re receive extra faith. Amen. More faith. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to be before y'all long. Um. <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't know. But um, so what? Speaking of Mike, uh, so um, I just wanted to share with you guys my um, I so I had vehicle probably like three months ago or two months ago, something like that. But before I purchased it, you know, you all got to get like insurance for it. And when it's a new vehicle, you got to get full cover insurance, right? So I was very concerned, like um. I'm like really budget friendly, so I make sure like my I keep under ten bills, like that's how I live, and everything else is an overflow. So I met this guy when um, I was looking for a vehicle. To make a very long story short, and um, he was like, "Oh, you should get this truck," and I was like, "But the insurance." But you should get that truck. But the insurance. I kept worrying about the insurance. He was like, I got you. Don't worry about it. I can. He said, how much did they quote you for a certain vehicle that I really wanted? It was like a 21 Chevy Trailblazer or something like that. I was like, with my car, it was like $250 per month. So I was looking to spend like that or a little bit less per month. So he was like, I could beat that at least by $100. And I'm like, no, you can't. With full coverage insurance. And he was like, I bet I can. So make a long story short, he had um, did the quote for me or whatever and saved me $100. Like, so my insurance is with the new truck and the other car, it's like $125 a month. So, um, 
<laughs> so I had posted um the I had posted the it's called the Dillers Policy Insurance. I had posted on the band. And then if anybody wants their number, you can come to me. I'll give it to you. And you can um, get a quote for your area. All right? Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you for insurance. At this time, we will have our sister Mello give us an update on all of our announcements. If you guys are bu uh, not busy on the weekend, you guys want to get involved, get involved. Good morning, church. Y'all look so beautiful. Good morning. Hi. So I'm Ella. I'm about to give y'all these good, good announcements, but uh, enough is enough. Okay. okay. Can I calm down? Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so yesterday was a whole blessing. We had an ordination, ordination service. So we had some, some people go forth. Christina, I worry y'all. Come on, stand up so we can give you some love today. Hey, 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 hey. She out here. You the author and the finisher. Okay? You better talk about it. Okay, we... All right, author and the finisher. I was like, hey, she better be the author and the finisher, God. She better be. I was so serious. I was in my chair like, she better be the author and the finisher. Okay, I was excited. I, I'm telling you, I was like, I was so overjoyed yesterday. Like, I came in and the spirit was... I was like... Can I calm down? I can't calm down, y'all. It's like I drank coffee, okay? And I don't even drink coffee. I'm on a bean. Okay, 100. That's what I'm on right now. I'm so excited. Praise the worship team. Let me tell y'all yesterday. Baby. Baby, you deserve it. Baby. Baby, you deserve it. It was, it was phenomenal. I, I love y'all. I love y'all. Nick Yancey. Look how Yancey stand up. Stand up, sister. Stand up. Hey, hey, hey. When I, when I say baby, the weeping, okay? Because... You the weeping prophet too. Severe is, but girl, you weep yesterday had my soul like a lord. You better go. Woman of God. I'm excited because cause you're marrying folks, okay? You're marrying folks. I think Kalia gonna be the first one. Kalia said, Can you marry me? She almost fell out. I said, somebody catch her. She got the word, but she almost fell out. I said, somebody please catch her. Amen. And last but not least. Our brother, the smooth, the coolest, Matthew Cooley. Come on, brother. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Yes. Come on. Come on. I'm just so excited for you guys. I really am. Like, I'm overjoyed. If you can't tell that I'm excited, you're not living. Oh, I don't even. Facebook just jumped up on me like, hey. So, um, Okay. And we do have um, Miss Wildly. She was also ordained yesterday, too. God bless you, sister. You better be the battle axe for the Lord. You better be the battle axe, okay? I, battle axe. When I say, baby, she better be the battle axe. I was like, ooh, she the battle axe? God, I want to be the battle axe. I, I love an axe. When he said Thor, I said, I'm a Marvels fan. I, I, he said, he said axe yesterday. I said, I know he learned. I love an axe. I was like, I'm with it. Can I be the battle axe? God, I want to be the... Can I be a battle axe? You know the old school Christian songs? Okay, I'm going to get to the announcements because y'all over me. <laughs> so anyway, Colleen Wally, that was her name. God bless you, sister. Okay, so this weekend... Um, I'm sorry? Thank you. So this weekend, uh, Single Exposed Network had their first event. Absolutely phenomenal. We had a great turnout. Um, Sister Aisha Young is definitely in Children's Church, but her vision came to life. Amen. We are there to support her, and it was awesome, awesome, awesome. If you know anybody, send them our way. Okay, so last Thursday we had Freedom 101, which was a whole blessing. I never make it into the building, but my, my phone be like, so church got to, I be like, ooh. I be tuned in. So please tune in on Thursdays. Moses went ham. I heard Christina in the background. I said, baby, I learned some stuff that I didn't know. The Corinthian church was something. Okay, baby, the Corinthian church, I knew they was something. But baby, after that day, I was like, ooh, I learned something new. Because, you know, when you read the Bible, it's like new discovery. Like you learn something new every single time. And I thought I knew. But then when they started talking, I said, well, God, I didn't know that. Let me go look for this. 
Because, you know, you got to read the word for yourself. So I heard them talk about it. And I'm like, well, I read Corinthians. I don't remember this. But when they gave that scripture, I was like, I said, oh, Lord, I, I know. I know that I know. I was shocked. Baby, I was shocked. I'm telling you, I learned some new stuff on Thursday. I said, Lord, ooh. You know, because knowledge is power, and I'm all about knowing. Knowledge is definitely power, and I'm like, I'm a big reader. Like, I love books. So, you see a book, just throw, throw my name on it and see me on Sunday. Okay? Um, but I love books. I love information. I just, like, I'm a fact person, you know? So, yes, Thursdays, tune in. You can come into the building, or you can watch us on live. Um, also this week is women's this Thursday, actually, cause every other Thursday. So this Thursday is women's Bible study at 6 PM. We got uh sister Emma coming with a fresh word, but I just want to segue one more time. I promise I might say one more time and do it again. Cause you know, God is forgiven. So I'm gonna segue, but, uh, yes, me and Emma was having a conversation on Sunday and it goes in, it's in alignment with what Kenny was saying about levels, because those of you who went to Chicago with us that one year we had went and stuff. And why not? So we had went to uh, Chicago, and one of the things I was struggling with was fear. I was like, okay, I'm struggling with fear. I went to the conference. I was like, boom, I conquered fear. God said, uh, uh, baby girl, you conquered it on level five. You know, <laughs> it's levels to it. And I was telling Emma, I was like, I was having a conversation with God because I was fasting last week. And I was like, God, like, I thought I, I, I beat fear. Like, I thought I beat it. Like, you told me I beat it in Chicago. Chicago was two years ago. What's up? He was like, it's levels to this. I said, mind blown. I was like, okay, so I was on level five then. Now I'm on level 11. I said, I got I to gotta keep going. It, this, uh, yeah, I got to keep going. I said, okay, amen. So it is, it's levels. It's levels. Okay. Uh, I digress. <laughs> so just remember that we also have remote um, learning here Monday through Friday. Uh, Christina Iorio, see her or see um, Evie. They had that information for you at $25 registration. Uh, we are still taking little ones. So if you got a little one, send them our way. They are in good hands. We better than Allstate, baby. We better than Allstate because, you know, Allstate be like, We're, you're in good hands, okay? Baby, you know, school of life, baby, we good hands, okay? This is good ground. Y'all better stop playing this in your child here. Okay, and on Tuesdays we have prayer. So this Tuesday was Paga. Next Tuesday is regular prayer, regardless if it's Paga or it is regular pr prayer. We are still here Tuesdays at 6.30. So please feel free Amen. to come and check us out. Um, I just want to say hello to our Facebook followers. We love you. Please continue to tune in. Share, like. Bible study this, time, this Wednesday. Bible study. This Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Mighty Lion's Room. Y'all heard him, because he said it, nobody told me. But that's okay. Hey. Amen. Somebody knew, but he told you. But guys, uh, guys I love you guys, and have a great day. Happy Sunday. It is time for the word of God by our very own Apostle Moses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we bless your holy name, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are our great prophet. I thank you, Father, for your word, Father God, because you declare in things in the beginning, Father God. Father, I thank you for every testimony, God. I thank you for every word of encouragement, God. I thank you for the joy and that unspeakable that you supplied to us today. I thank you for the tools. I thank you for the equipping, God, of your people. Father, I thank you that this ministry is in your hand, God, and you have us on a righteous path. I love you so much, God, and I thank you, Father God. that you don't let us settle in the wilderness God that you're determined to get us to the places that you prepare for us Jesus and I honor you and I worship you amen, amen. hallelujah listen y'all blessed today I feel blessed I feel blessed knowing I'm in the hands of God no matter what it looked like 
if you realize what already took place today, you will have a phone full of notes already. Y'all waiting for me to preach, but God has already preached today. God has already preached. I was just listening like, man, God, thank you so much. Because a lot of the stuff that was in my spirit, God has already spoken it. And through that, God has proven to me that he's in control. I'm not in control. Like, He's leading us. I'm not leading us. I'm just following his lead with the rest of you. My brother, he talked about demonstrating the faith, and I thank you so much for sharing that. I really do. I, I learned a lot from the Father. I learned how he see things. His ways is different than ours. I learned it's different. It, it's different having a belief in having faith. It's different. It's not the same. My brother said, listen, he reminded us of the words that God has been speaking. And he said, God gave me a word last night. Enough is enough. I said, God is our prophet. That means he tell you things before they happen. Like That means he equip you with what you need before you even realize that you need it. I want to teach you that because... How we move is, God will say, listen, I want you to take your, ch your kids to Chuck E. Cheese. He'll tell you that in the morning. Why don't you take your kids to Chuck E. Cheese today? During, we like, yeah, I'm going to take my kids to Chuck E. Cheese. God bless y'all. He'll be like, listen, I'm a, when I get home, I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese them the life. I'm going to take them. But then you get a note from their teacher in the middle of the day. And they say they've been acting up in class. We'll be like, man, they don't deserve to go to Chuck E. Cheese. I'm not taking them because of that. But what I'm going to tell you this, and I mean this with all love. I mean this with all love. To God, you don't have no faith. None. That's how God see it. That shows you don't trust God at all. That's what that shows. I'm not, I'm not saying it's in condemnation. I'm saying it's based on the words that they already spoke. Melo just said it's levels to this. And I'm never going to let you settle where you are. Never. I'm never going to let you settle. God could do straight miracles. I'm going to come right behind you and rebuke you. Because I don't want you settling in the wilderness. I don't want you settling. Like, I'm not going to let you be stuck where you're at. Like. If it's up to me, you're going to go as far as God wants you to go. That's the type of heart Jesus had. Jesus said, I got prepared places. I don't want you. Listen, you just passing through. You just going through. We ain't building cities when we going through. We just passing through here. Amen. This is how God see it. Because when God told you that when God tell you, take your kids to Chuck E. Cheese, he already know what's going to happen. He already know your kid is going to act up in school. He know why they acting up. They acting up because you've been too busy all week. And you ain't spend no time with them. He know that already. So he give you an answer before you even realize the need. God knows the need. So he said, listen, take your kids to Chuck E. Cheese. Then they act up and you like, man, I'm, I'm, I, what am I going to do with them? God already told you what to do. He already gave you the answer. He said, take them to Chuck E. Cheese because he already know they're dealing with a deficit because you've been too busy to spend time with them. Now they in class acting out, trying to get attention that you were supposed to give them at home. God knows that already. But we think we know more than God. That's why we be confused. I'm telling you, God is leading us. You ain't got to never be confused because God going to order every step. You don't got to figure nothing out. Nothing. If you're trying to figure it out, you're not in faith. You're not in faith. You don't have to figure nothing out. If we paying attention, God came in here. He already preached the whole sermon. I, I'm not trying to figure out how I'm supposed to preach after that. God already don't spoke and said everything that we need. It's not about me giving you a fancy word or hyping you up. Whatever I'm telling you, you're going to need it this week. I'm like, dang, God. Y'all like, yeah, hey, I'm excited. Pa Terrence don't share the testimony, had me on fire in the inside. I'm like, listen, all the joy. Then I start thinking, oh, boy, what am I going to go through this week that, God, I need all this joy right now? 
God, what's going to happen that you're going to give me this much of a supply of joy? The joy of the Lord is our strength. So, dang, Lord, thank you for equipping me with the strength. Thank you for giving me something to stand on when I'm going through. Jesus ain't never tell you it wasn't going to be no storm. He just told you we going to the other side. So if you talking to him about all the storms, Jesus like you got little faith. I told you we going to the other side. That's all, you, that's all we need to be talking about. Be purpose driven. Stand on what I said. We going to the other side. It's okay if it's a storm. We, we st we're going to make it through it because I already told you what you needed to know. You didn't need to know it was going to be a storm. You didn't need to know it was going to be a wilderness. All you needed to know is what I, where I was going to take you. Amen. So my brother talked about demonstrating the faith in the words that are spoken. And I say, yes, Lord, give me the grace to do it. Then we talked about God providing life in the midst of death. My sister gave a testimony this morning about her grandson. God providing life in the midst of death. See, I, re I learned, I said, thank you, God, because he set it up for our success. God said, for you to be saved, you have to believe that Jesus died on a cross. You have to believe that I raised him from the grave. Like, You have to believe in these things to be saved. It's practical. When you accept it in the forefront, amen, it feel good. The spirit hits you. But for you, to, for you to make it, for you to get delivered, for you to make it to where God wants you, you have to believe that every step of the way. Because everything in that process is going to challenge that stuff. Listen, we say we believe that God sent Jesus to die on the cross. But then when God allow you to go through hell, you ask him why. But you say that you will believe that God would do that to his own son. So why are you questioning God like he won't do that to you? You said you believe that. You have to believe that to be saved. Like You have to believe that to make it. Because God will lead you in some situations. And then you got to believe that he raised Jesus from the grave. Why you got to believe that to be saved? Because for you to make it through that situation, you got to believe that God will first put you in that situation. And then you have to believe that God will raise you up no matter how crazy it look like. If you believe that, you will resist the temptation to raise yourself up. We be like, man, I'm tired of being, you know what? I'm just going, I'm about to kick up. I'm a kick up. Like I'm a, I'm a raise up. And you know what happened? It never succeed. It never lasts because it's flesh. If you trust God like that, then trust him to raise you up. If you trust God like that, then suffer it. Like if you trust God and you're going to kill the demons, and do all of that, then don't let them use you. Close your mouth when anger try to manifest through you. Be a good soldier. I know you know how to fight, but can you endure hardship as a good soldier? Like, can you stay in the rank until the general tell you to move? Even though you see the enemy standing there, just stand in your rank and wait for the general to give you instruction. I know you got a gun, but don't shoot it yet until the general say, now we shoot. Like, amen. Then they talked about, Terrence talked about peace in the midst of an attack. It's strategic that God had him talk about that. God is showing us, listen, you could be surrounded by the enemy and still have peace. Listen, you can't fight a cop. Maybe you can, but you can't fight six of them. And even if you can, it's not going to be a good end after that. So he was in a situation where he might got some hands. But God, he was in a situation where he couldn't use the weapons that he already have. He had to use a different weapons for the victory. Come on. Peace is a bomb that can destroy warfare. You can fight warfare, but peace can destroy war before it ever happened. In the book of Luke 14, Jesus said, listen, before a king go out to war to fight another nation, he first sent a peace, a person out with a peace treaty first. So if that ambassador of peace can settle the war before it ever happened, peace is a weapon. 
And then my sister talked about its levels to this. I thank God for how far he's brought us. I thank God for everything that he's taught us. But we still learning. We still got some roads to travel. We still have some seasons to endure. It's still some things that God, areas that God want to grow us in. And that's okay. That's okay. You don't got to condemn yourself. It's okay. We just the children of God. We just taking and learning. Amen. Amen. Today, I'm going to talk about ambition. I'm going to talk about ambition. I pray that through this message that it's a lot of powerful people with visions and dreams and God has graced you to do wonderful things. I pray that what, what I hope that God would accomplish through this message is to teach you stewardship. We are three things. We are servants of God. We are sons of God. And we're stewards for God. So to be mature sons, God want to teach us how to steward the things or manage the things that he allows us to have access to. A lot of times when we talk about ambition, okay, before I say this. Amen. Yes, Lord. So <laughs> I'm scrolling on Facebook and uh, this wonderful woman of God, she shared a post. She said, I don't know who this is for, but something major is coming. Amen. I don't know who that's for me. I say, Father, I receive it. I receive that in Jesus name. I don't know who this for is for me. Father, I receive it. It's for me. But something major is coming. God is about to blow your mind. Your prayer isn't delayed. It's just gaining interest. Listen, listen. Matter of fact, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your and just listen to it. I don't know who this is for, but something major is coming. God is about to blow your mind. Your prayer isn't delayed. It's just gaining interest. Will you be ready? Because at any moment, God can shift you from what you're waiting on to walking in it. You better get ready. Before you have to be ready. Get ready to move. Get ready to move. And I say, yes, Lord, I receive it. Thank you, woman of God, for sharing that. I said I receive it. She said, get ready to move in all capitals. <laughs> I say, yes, Lord. It's just so amazing that, that the Holy Spirit had her place that. Because we haven't shared it with everyone, but within the next week, by the grace of God, we won't be in this building. We won't be in this building. It's not because of a bad reason. It's because of a good reason. The anointing destroys the yoke. So when God, in, the, what that means is the word anointing means the fatness. So when they use animals to farm and to do the hard labor in the field, they will put a yoke on their neck so that the animals stay in stride step by step with one another. The anointing destroys that yoke that is put upon their neck. That word anointing means the fatness. So as they feed the animals, they get bigger. They get weightier like it's a fatness. It's an increase. But as they increase, the yoke doesn't fit their neck anymore. Like, So it's, not, it's a great thing. It's an awesome thing. Because what that means is that God is increasing us. And this place don't fit us no more. And I celebrate God for keeping us on a righteous path. Because God is never going to let us be comfortable. We could be in a place, oh, yeah, we got this. You know, we taking care of the bills. We know how. And then God is just going to shift us. 
Because for us to experience a move of God and a move of the spirit like we do, it's required that we always be in a place of faith. It's required that we always be in a place of faith. So I'm excited and I want to share this with you guys, not for you to try to solve where we move in. God has anointed people to do that. But I'm sharing this so that you guys can be in agreement with what my sister said in the spirit. Get ready before you have to be ready. Like get ready to move. Prepare your spirit because listen, God has already moved. God is what that mean is God has already moved. And the longer the, we stay in this building, the more problems we're going to have. The more problems we're going to have. Because the increase has already broke the bands of where we at in the natural. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all believe that? Hallelujah. So I want to talk just to about the um, ambition. <sighs> I know they lit back there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, ambition is talked about in a negative way in the body of Christ. It's used to check people or hold people back or give indirect messages behind the pulpit about what we're jealous about what other people are doing. Ambition is a strong desire to do or to achieve something, typically requiring determination and hard work. It is also the desire and the, and the determination to ach achieve success. It's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. Amen. Amen. Clearly, some amount of a bit ambition is good for your motivation. So, my brother, without any ambition, you wouldn't start your own business. You wouldn't set or achieve goals and get very far in life. But an excess of ambition can also be dangerous. Putting you at risk of burnout, stubbornness, and even a shorter life. I'm praying that through this message that God will sever anything connected to our godly ambition. And that our ambition will be free to connect to the plans and purposes of God. Hallelujah. Go with me, go with me to the book of Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. I'm going to start at verse 1. It's good to hear the word of God, so I'm going to read a, a good amount of chapters. So I just pray that you have a listening ear. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. In the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver in thy treasures. Somebody say ambition. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic has thou increased thy riches. He's doing his numbers. And thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. And they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. 
Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man and no God, and in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the depths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Amen. Now, let me just give you some context to understand, because here he's dealing with the prince of Tyrus. And now he's going to deal with the king of Tyrus. God is amazing. Whenever he give a prophetic decree of judgment, it deal with two dimensions, the spiritual and the natural. So whenever a principality rule a region, it do it through a natural person as a counterpart. It's a spiritual ruler and it's a natural ruler. And those two are in agreement for the enemy's plan to be effective in that region. So it's one thing for us to stand and pray and pray against principalities and powers, but not deal with the manifestation in the natural. So here he's dealing with the prince of Tyrus, which here he said it's a man that's trying to act like he's God in the natural. So we see here prophetically God is judging the natural counterpart, but now he's going to deal with the spiritual. All right. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou seals up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden in the garden of God. So now we know he's not talking about a natural person because the only two natural people that was in the, the garden of Eden was Adam and Eve. But we know it was a serpent present there. So thou has been in Eden in the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. Now he talking about Lucifer here. God like, listen, you bugging like you was blessed. You could seal up the sum, which means he was a great leader. Sealing up the sum means that he covered a group of angels and he kept them in line. He was he didn't just have wisdom. He was full of wisdom. And he was perfect in beauty. He don't look like they show him on a TV like Lucifer coming pure, handsome, sharp, dapper. Then God like, listen, I made you perfect in beauty. You wasn't just handsome. You was perfect in beauty. Like I, you ain't just have wisdom. You was full of wisdom. Like I made you a great leader. You was in the garden. Every precious stone was thy covering. It's tw the, e the priest would wear 12 stones on their chest. Lucifer had 10 of the 12. So basically, God like, listen, you had all you had almost all the gifts. You had almost all the gifts like. Listen, this sounds like some of us. You blessed. You got multiple anointings. You called to prophesy, go to the nations, heal the sick, cast out devils. God bless you with prosperity, full of wisdom, full of revelation. God always speak to you. You always got a word. Huh? You blessed. Like, how you? Like, listen, let me tell you what the Lord said. Like, you prosperous. Every precious stone was thy covering, he said. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee. So they say creative, like they say creatively, like Lucifer was the worship leader. That's what they just say. But what we're trying to emphasize the point that that his his. His voice was melodic. It wasn't just his voice. It was the glory that he walked in. Lucifer carries such a glory with him that when you looked at him, you started praising God. Y'all like, dang, but that's how he was able to deceive people. Because when you looked at him, listen, when they wear the ephod on them, when they wear the ephod, 
when they be in the presence of God, the prophetic symbolism was that the ephod on their chest reflected the light of God. So when you seen the priest, you seen God. So it's telling you that Lucifer had all these stones. So when he in the glory of God, when you look at him, you see God. He literally reflected the glory of God off his chest. So when you looked at Lucifer, you seen God. That's how he was able to deceive angels that was in the presence of God, created by God, because he started liking the attention that he was getting. Like, amen. Yeah, you know I'm saying. He started feeling himself like God designed it that way. That when they seen him, it's called the garment of praise. He had a mantle that provoked people to praise God. But he's the so when they seen him, they would direct the praise. But like a worship leader, he would direct the glory to God. But he stopped doing that. He started liking the praise that was directed in his direction. It wasn't for him, but it was directed towards him so he can direct it towards God. But he started liking the praise coming in his direction. He started liking it like. It says that thou art the anointed cherub that covers. God like, bro, I chose you to cover. Cherubs don't cover people. They cover God's glory. God like, I didn't just anoint you to cover other angels. I anointed you to cover me. And then God said, I have set thee so. God, like, I set it up for like, like, I gave you everything. God, like, I gave you everything that I can possibly give you. I gave you a position for you to be a cherub gov covering God's glory where he had to be. He had to be right by the throne of God. God, like, listen, look at all this I gave you. I unlimited access I gave you everything that I can give you being a cherub it's only one thing that I couldn't give you because it belonged to somebody else you was right there in my glory covering my glory by my throne but the right hand of the father I couldn't give that to you like You a son, I anointed you with power. I anointed you to be just like Jesus. But it's something I gave him that I can't give you. Hallelujah. God said, I don't share my glory with anybody. But God like, look, I, you come to church every week and you feel my presence. I share my glory with you. I share my spirit with you. I share my word with you. I treat you are you are a sinner, but I treat you like a son. You smack me in the face. You stole from me. You robbed me. You murdered my people. But you know what? I'm gonna give you keys to the kingdom. But it's some things I can't give it to you. Like it's not for you. It's for somebody else. I'm still talking about ambition. He said, thou was upon the holy mountain of God. God, can I go, please? If he ain't like that spot, please let me go, Father. <laughs> thou has walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. How many know that's the altar in heaven? Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Until. God said, I made you perfect in your ways until. T 
until iniquity was found in thee. Now the word iniquity means it's different from sin. Sin is when you transgress the commandments. God say do that and you don't do it. Sin. God say believe this and you don't believe it. Sin. Sin means you're missing the mark. You're falling short of the glory. So God say give $10,000, but we give $5,000 is sin. It's sin. You know why? Because you missed the mark. God ain't set that mark. This is the mark God said. God said give that. If I'm giving less than that, what am I leaning on? My own understanding like. We reading this like, yo, this prince, he bugging. He a man, but he trying, in his heart, he trying to be God. But that's what we do every day when we lean on our own understanding. God said, do this. We like, ah, you know what? Maybe if I do this, it'll work. The devil is a liar. And so is your own understanding. How many know when you do that, it don't work? Like, sometimes you don't get, sometimes you don't get the memo ASAP that it don't work. Sometimes you got to go through six months of a tribulation to get the revelation. Like, dang, you know what? I realize my way it don't work. Like, my, my plan, it ain't work like I thought it was going to work. Like, and God be looking there like, didn't I tell you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how, many people, how many people had to learn that lesson the hard way? Like. How many people thank you, thank you for that God ain't give up on you? Like, God was patient. God, like, listen, however you want to learn it, you're going to learn this lesson. We got purpose to accomplish. I invested too much into you. I thank God that he ain't treat me like Lucifer. You know why? Because I was him. God cast him down, but God gave me Jesus. God didn't give him another chance, but God gave me another chance. Can somebody be thankful for his grace today? I'm just grateful that God loved me more than he loved Lucifer. Like That let me know I'm the apple of his eye. I can't escape his grace. Because God's showing us, look, I could have did you like this, but I love you. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Keep me purpose driven. Thank you. That's what that's what you thank you, baby. You're doing your job. <laughs> Hallelujah. So iniquity, it means a inner twisting. So you can have a desire that come from God, but something get added to it and it get twisted. It get turned upside down. Iniquity is also connected to the word equity, which means equal. So sometimes things get twisted in our desires in our heart because we want to be equal with something or someone that we not equal to. Like, listen, I used to, I used to be like, yo, I I didn't really have honor for my pastor. I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't honor him. You know why? Because I had the same gifts as him. I'm like, listen, he prophesying. They celebrate. Oh, come on, man. I'm like, man, I can prophesy too. Like, we got the same spirit. Like, I got the same gifts. You know what I'm saying? He getting, bringing people to Christ. I'm like, listen, hey, that's a blessing. I respect what he's doing. But it's like, you know, God used me to do the same thing. <laughs> same spirit. Like, I got the same Jesus. I got the same Holy Spirit. That's true. That's very true. But... I didn't have the same rank as him. Like, I didn't have the same rank. I had the same spirit, but I ain't had the same rank. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, amen. So, this is what happened with Lucifer. Iniquity was found in him. Why? Because of the multitude of thy merchandise. 
They have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stone of fire. He lost all his access, y'all. He lost all his access, but what it doesn't tell you is that, what it doesn't say is that he lost his anointing. Listen, Satan don't have a demonic anointing. Sa Satan don't have a demonic anointing. Satan have an anointing that he got from God right now. Like, that's why he's successful. Because he got an anointing from God. That's why he can deceive people. That's why he can influence people because he's utilizing the anointing from God in his own way. Listen, we're talking about ambition. We're talking about ambition. He using right now, he's using the gifts full of wisdom. God never said he took the wisdom away. He still got the pipes in him. He still his presence still command worship to this day. He still got most of the gifts that God gave him. God gave him 10 out of 12. He still got those gifts right now. He still can seal up the sum like he be having he be having his squad in a stronghold. They be deadlocked. You try to share the gospel with him. No, no, no. I, I just love the enemy. Like <laughs> you be like, dang, you want to you rather die than receive Jesus. He be having them strong locked. He still can pull us into the wrong realm with the wrong song. He still can do that. Hallelujah. He still loved the attention and he loved the glory. That's what Corona is for. Corona was his strategy for us to worship him. It was a strategy. We spend more, we give Corona more attention than God. We give it more attention. We wake up and we look in the news. Oh, what's, what's, what, what we got to do today? Listen, we obey whatever that spirit behind Corona tell us to do. We obey it without question. Without question. Whatever they take, you know, I got to do that. What if we applied the same thing when God tell us something? What if we had the same diligence when God told us something? We would see revival. We would see signs and wonders and miracles. We would see the dead raised. And I'm not talking about the ones in the caskets. I'm talking about the ones in your own family. Like, See, we want somebody to get out the casket so we can look like we did something. We got it all on YouTube and hey, we praying and they, they coughing. Ha, ha, ha. We doing all that and your marriage is dead. We doing all of that and your obedience is dead. I thank God for unplugging this ministry from the matrix of the false prophecies that's going on in the kingdom. Listen, I've been thanking God. All. I said, God, thank you so much, God. Thank you. You're not letting us be deceived. Listen, they're giving right words, but the picture is wrong. <laughs> they, they speaking what the Holy Spirit said, but the dream they telling us that came out their own heart. In other words, yeah, God did say that, but that's not what it looked like. We want revival on the street and people getting out of wheelchairs, but we, we don't want God to touch the dead relationships that we have with our own children. We don't want that to be revived. We just want to see somebody get out the wheelchair so God can prove to the world we right. We don't want the dead to be raised. We just want God to prove to the world that we right and they not. Somebody, come on, help us, Jesus. I said, God, I thank you. Thank you, Father, for having us on a righteous path. Thank you, Jesus. 
again, there's nothing wrong with ambition. We need that to be motivated to do what we need to do. But Lucifer is a perfect example of when ambition get twisted and pride begins to fill our hearts. Sometimes I, when God was dealing with me about pride, I'm like, God, I'm, I'm not prideful. I'm trying to do what you told me to do. I'm using the gifts you gave me. But I wasn't aware that something was attached to my gifts that was perverting what I was doing. I wasn't aware that because like Lucifer and iniquity was found in me and pride connected itself to my purpose that I was I, I started being lifted up in my heart. Come on. Let me let me go to here. Let me go to Isaiah 14. I'm just trying to help us with stewardship because God has purposed us to do great things. I realize that every believer want God in their life. And I've been saying this all week, so you're just going to have to hear it again. Every believer want God in their life. We all want God in our life. Most believers want what God wants for their life in their life. But no believer want his will. No believer. And when I'm talking about the will, I said that most of us want what God wants for our life in our life. But no believer want his will. And what I'm saying is his will. I'm talking about his plan. Even Jesus said that. Jesus said, listen, I want to I want you to do it, father. Listen, I want you to save him. But is it another strategy that you have like? Is it another plan? Like, can we negotiate? Can we reason? Can we come up with another way that don't include me going through anything? Can we include another way that don't include me being persecuted and being humiliated in front of everybody and look like. Listen, I want another way. Our Father, listen. When God told me my purpose, I didn't celebrate it. I didn't say, yeah, oh my God, I'm called to be a prophet. I said, God, I make, I'm scared. I felt in my heart that God would use me in a great way. And I was afraid, bro. I was afraid. I wasn't happy. I said, God. Just let me just teach the Bible study in the back. Just let me teach the children. That's all I want. I don't got to be big. I knew that for God to use me in a great way, I could only imagine what would I have to go through to get there. And I was afraid of that, bro. I said, man, God, for you to use me like that, what, it, what the crushing going to look like? And I said... I, I said, God, I don't, I listen, can you pick something else for me? Like, can you pick something else for me, Father? Like, I think I'm so grateful for the salvation. But if it's another way. I no believer, no believer want the plan. Because the plan got miracles and suffering. Like, the plan got joy and peace and sacrifice and death. Like. The plan to get you, make you feel comfortable with joy and stretch you beyond your wildest imaginations. Like, you be like, God, if that if that happened to me, that's the wrong thing to say to God. You be like, God, if that happened to me, I don't know what I'd do. God said, let me show you what you're going to do. Like, I, listen, let me show you. I said you're a new creature. Now let me prove it to you. I'm trying to tell you. Listen. Nobody want his plan, but only a handful of people accept it. I don't want it, but I, 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 I'm come to the place like Jesus. I said, listen, Lord, if it ain't no other way, let your will be done. Like, this God, whatever you want to do. I'm tired of trying to take the will. This is whatever you want to do. I just surrender to it. And if we do that, Jesus said, you enter into the door. 
ambition to try to have you the pride connected to your ambition to have you trying to go up another way and climb up another way because the other way don't go through the door of death. The other way don't kill in you what needed to be killed so you won't be like Lucifer. In John chapter 10, Jesus was giving us an example of leadership. He wasn't even talking about himself. He said, I am the door. He that enters into the door, they became the shepherd of the sheep. He talking about you being the leader that God called you to be. If he the door, then he that enters into it is not Jesus. It's you. But he was teaching his disciples how not to be like the Pharisees, how to be good leaders between him and Lucifer, who was the good leader. They both had ambition. They both had gifts. But something happened in Lucifer that he didn't kill. He didn't let it die. So it grew and he deceived one third of the angels. So Jesus said, listen, I'm trying to teach you how not to be like him. Lucifer was a good leader. He says, Satan come to steal, kill and destroy. You'd be like, man, Satan going to do that, not me. But if you don't go through the door, your ambition, I have you do the same thing. Yes, Stealing people's opportunities, robbing them of their gifts, still in their relationship with God, robbing their growth without even realizing it. Yeah. Yes. So Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. See, when we go through the door and we allow God to temper and kill the pride off our ambition, we able to stick through it with people and we don't choose our purpose over people. That's why David was a man at the God's own heart. It ain't because he worshiped God in secret. You know why he was a man at the God's own heart? Because he had the David was anointed for war. He would go through a war and he won't even get touched. He would be on the front line clash with the front line of the other end of the other army and he won't even get touched he was anointed for war like that he said listen many fall by my left side and my right side he he listen you ever seen that on the movies when the, when the armies clash it's like they just clash boom and it's like they just start rocking out david david wasn't like the other kings just standing on a hill with the white horse looking pretty David was down there like brave heart with it and he didn't even get touched. That's how much he was anointed for warfare. Like, come on now. That's how anointed David was for warfare. And anytime God, David asked God for something, God gave it to him. He said, listen, God always deliver my enemies in my hands. But his enemy was his friend, too. His enemy was his own leader, throwing javelins, trying to kill him. And God said, I'm going to honor your prayer. You anointed for war, and I promise you, I deliver all your enemies in your hand. So here's Saul. Now what you going to do? David's purpose was to be the king. Listen, Saul was still the king. Why Saul was the king? God anointed David to be the king while Saul is in the position. I want you to hear this. Saul was in the position. While Saul was in the position, God anointed David for the same job. I'm, I'm talking about ambition. Listen, I'll be looking at some of these preachers and I love them and I praise God. But I'll be like, listen, that ain't how you do that right there. Like, see, my ambition, because I know what God called me to do. God called me to take it to another level. But my pride had me doing it before it was the time. I was anointed to do it in people's stead, but they had the position at that time. David had the opportunity to do what he was anointed to do, which is destroy his enemies. 
God delivered his enemy to him. He said, here, Saul, go ahead. That's your enemy. You prayed about this. Here goes Saul right here. And David said, I ain't even going to kill him. Like, I have the ability, but I'm not going to use it. Like, my ambition, I could destroy him with my gifts. But you know what? I'm not going to do that right now. Like, I love him. I honor him. He's still in the position as my leader. Like, even though my anointing is greater than his, I'm a, I'm a trim the fat off my ambition. Like, because pride can connect to my ambition like Lucifer and I can be lifted up trying to take a position that God ain't give me yet. It is mine, but God didn't give it to me yet. Like, I can take it right now, but God didn't give it to me right now. So, so David made a decision to kill that that was connected to his ambition. Kill the pride. He said, I'm going to humble myself right here. I'm going to show him I could have did it. I'm just going to cut that right off his robe and show him, listen, I love you, sir. This is the proof I love you. I could have been did it. I could have been started my own church. I could have been had somebody else ordain me. I could have been went forth without your validation. But I chose not to. Like, let me, let me show you this piece of cloth right here, this royal cloth. I could have been did this right here. Like, huh? I could have been went forth like. God been anointing me to do it. But I want to trim the fat off of it. Hallelujah. David, and that's when David, that's when God said, listen, look at my son. He just like me. That's when David became a man after my own heart. Because God like, dang, that's how I do it. Like, when you sin, I could have cast you to hell. When you did that, I could have threw you in the garbage. I could have left you by the wayside. Like, I could have judged you ten times over. But I love you so much, I chose not to use my ambition. I gave you another chance. Hallelujah. I, I humbled myself. I could have did it to you. God, God will snip a little piece off your robe and show you. He'll spank you a little bit and tell you, listen, I could have did you real dirty. But I gave you another chance. So when David did the same thing, God said, look at him. He really my son. He just like me because that's what I do like. In that moment, David could have took that opportunity that God gave him to go into his purpose and destiny. See, ambition, when pride connect to your ambition, you would choose purpose over people. When pride is connected to your ambition, you choose purpose over people. Sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to do that. But see, this was the difference between David and Peter. Peter's purpose was to lead his brethren. But to prove in his prideful ambition, he wanted to prove to Jesus he was more loyal than all of them. And Jesus had to correct them multiple times every time he did it. See, when pride is connected to your ambition, you can't stay in your rank. When pride is connected to your ambition, you can't you can't stand on your post. Like when pride is connected to your ambition, you focus on tomorrow when today got enough cares of his own. Like when pride is connected to your ambition, you more focus on the you more focus on a prophecy than your responsibility. Like when pride is connected to your ambition, you want to go to the nations, but you can't even take your kids to Chuck E. Cheese like God told you to do. Like God told you to do it. God told you to do it. It don't matter what they did. Uh, they don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. Let God trim the fat off your ambition so you can be like him. So you can be a child after his heart like David did. Amen. Isaiah chapter 14. I'm going to get back to Peter. Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? 
How art thou cut down to the ground? Bible says pride come before a fall. Pride come before a fall because pride hinders your ability to trust the one that's able to keep you from falling. How art thou fallen from heaven? No, he ain't just stumble over a stone. He fell out the spirit like. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let y'all just think on that. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I messed up, but I thank God for his grace. Amen. But you, but we don't realize that we fell out the spirit. Like, <laughs> Amen. I'm going to leave that. All right. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Dang, when you fall and you fall out the spirit, it weakened the nation. Amen. Listen. When Lucifer fell, one third of the angels fell with him. That means it's people depending on your walk. He said, how you fall? When you fell, the nation's weakened. Like We watching the news. See, I see it different. We watch the news and we see bombings happening here and all that. You know what that tell me? As soon as I see that, I said, dang, the intercessors and the prophets is not received there. They're not received there. Because they don't want that make up the head so that stuff don't happen. If that stuff is happening, I'm like, dang, see, they ain't even receiving the prophets and the intercessors and the watchmen. Warning them, telling them how they're supposed to move in every season. Amen. Nations being weakened. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. Now look. He fell out of heaven because he said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. <laughs> Amen. My God. His ambition, he wanted to kick down the door. What if he would have waited on God's time, he would have opened it for him. Hallelujah. He fell out of heaven because in his heart, he wanted to ascend into heaven. I'm going to leave this here. And I'm going to teach on this another time. But. The body of Christ, we've been deceived for our desire for glory. We've been deceived by that. We've been deceived by our hunger for glory. We, we, we idolize Moses because he said, God, show me your glory. I'm telling you, that's why he didn't enter into the promised land. We're not idolizing that in here. I got to tear that down. That's why he didn't enter the promised land. That right there. That's why we can have a glorious moment and then right after that, the rebuke is coming. We not, we not about to over celebrate and build cities in the wilderness because God manifested his glory. God, God already had a plan. God said, Moses, the angel going to lead you out. Moses said, I don't want the angel. I want you to show me. That sounds real spiritual, but you know what that show is pride connected to your ambition. That's why it, that's why Moses didn't make it into the promised land and he fell short and he never fulfilled what God called them to. God didn't call God called them to make it into the promised land and to lead those people in. But he couldn't enter in because pride was connected to his ambition because he was a general and he had strategy. He said, God, I don't want your strategy. I got my own strategy like it kept manifesting after that. God says, speak to the rock. No, God, I'm going to hit the rock because I know how this works. I know how my anointing work. I know the gifts you gave me. I'm going to work what you gave me. I'm going to hit the rock because every time I hit the rock, water come out. God, but God has shifted him and he didn't even know it. He was off point because the pride was connected to his ambition. He can't even listen to God. God said the angel going to lead you like. Listen, I was there. I'm like, listen, people, you know, my leader came to me and said, son, you got to deal with this. And nah, man, God talked to me every day. I don't need to listen. Pride connected to him. God did talk to me every day. That was the truth. But the pride connected to my relationship with God made it so that I can't listen to somebody else. It's so funny because I was prophesying to people every day. But when somebody came and gave me a word, I had to judge it and say, I don't feel the spirit. The devil is a lie. You're full of pride. You can you got the right to tell everybody else what God is saying. But when somebody come to you. 
inside. That's a demon. Amen. That's pride connected to your ambition. You got a false sense of importance. You always got to have a word for somebody, but can't nobody share nothing with you. You can't receive it like you want to tell them how they got to line up and be corrected, but you can't receive it. Why you can't receive it? Why you can't receive it? So I, I'm like, dang, God, I, I can't receive nothing. They share something. I always got to have something. You know, well, yeah, you know, the Lord told me this. I remember one time the Lord said, I, somebody was saying, I'd be like, yeah, I know that. Lord told me that before. Like, yeah, you know, they're like, man, you know what I learned in the Bible? I said, yeah, man, you know, the Lord been taught me that. I had to let you know I'm on, I'm, I'm on another level than you. Like, yeah, you know, the Lord, I didn't just say the Lord taught me that. I said the Lord been taught me that, like, to let you know, like, I've been at that level and I moved on. I had to let you know. I remember God told me, God said, why you just can't say amen? Like, I said, I, I, said, I don't know why. Why? <laughs> I thought about it like, amen. Like, you, why can't I just say amen to it? It's the truth. Why, why, why can't I just celebrate what they just received from you? Why can't I just celebrate it? You know why? Pride was connected to my ambition. Like when God saved me, when God anointed me, I thought it was my job to save the world. Like I felt like that. I'm like, man, God, I got to correct. Every, I got to fix the whole body. We all wrong. Everybody got to get fixed. I remember being in a Bible study. Nine people share something and I share something last. I went, I took time, I went behind what each person said and corrected each thing that they said in the middle of the Bible study. And this is the crazy thing, I'm not the teacher. Somebody there that's teaching the Bible study. I'm there to receive. But because God gave me wisdom and he speak to me and he teach me stuff, I took it upon myself in someone else's classroom to start teaching. It's... It's pride connected to my ambition. God gave me the grace. What they're talking, God like, nah, don't receive that. That's wrong. I took it upon myself to tell the teacher that. I was a whole different type of person. When I first got saved, if you was up here in this pulpit and you said, if you ain't crossed the T on Matthew, if you said Matthew, I'm going to raise my hand and tell you, listen, you said Matthew. It's Matthew. I'm trying to tell you, like, I was a savage, like. Correcting pastors, messing the whole Bible study up. And you know what's crazy? What I'm correcting them on was true. You know who told me? God told me. But he ain't tell me to say it like. My, my ambition told me to do that. I said, I'm going to rise up. God ain't raised me up. I said, I'm going to ascend like. Somebody else was in the position that I was anointed for, but I try to ascend to it. Amen. I'm helping you. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. God put down one and what did he do? He raised up another. The key word is he raised up another. But what God, like, I don't bless you. How, how, how high are you want to go? Like, you in the glory. You by my throne. I bless you with all these gifts and wisdom. Where you want to go? How high you want to go? It was only one person higher than him, and his name is Jesus Christ. He wasn't satisfied with all that God gave him. He wanted Jesus' job. Like, it's true. He said, I will ex exalt my throne above the stars of God. See, he wanted he was so ambitious. He wanted to rise the ranks above his peers. Like, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. If, if the north is the top, the highest point, the side of it is the right hand. Y'all see that yeah. to be on the side of the north means to be the right hand of God. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. Man, how high you want to go? Like, <laughs> it ain't enough for God to have a purpose for your life. You got to ascend higher and above. Like, my God, this ambition. I will be like the most high. Now, listen, it's nothing wrong with, with wanting to ascend. 
It's nothing wrong with wanting to walk in with God. It's nothing wrong with wanting to be like God. God wants you to be like him. But the problem is when pride connect to it, we do think we don't do things in the timing of God. We don't do things according to the will of God. We start sacrificing people to accomplish it. We don't stay in purpose. It says, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Okay. Now go to Matthew. So let me tell you about, let me talk about Jesus and Peter. So Matthew chapter 4, and I'm about to be done soon. Okay. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Now listen, ambition is good. I'm not condemning ambition. But God want to clean it. This was... Then was Jesus led up, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up by the, up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Because I'm going to help you. I'm going to tell you where you put your ambition. See, a lot of times the problem be, because I'm like, God, how am I? Pro I'm trying to do what you called me to do. I'm trying to be obedient. But what I didn't realize, I didn't, I didn't understand the order of things. Order of things, including the timing of things. But it also means putting things in the right place. When you go home and it's like you got dishes in the living room, it's out of order because the dishes don't go there. So a lot of times things be dysfunctional in our life because we have the right things in the wrong place. OK, so your ambition is good if it's in the right place. All right. So then when Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, I got to stop right here because my brother said you got to have faith in the word. Now, look, your faith goes somewhere. It got to be in the right place. So you feel you have faith because you believe what the Bible say. But the message that God choose to go forth on Sunday, you don't have faith in that. You don't have faith in that. Amen. I'm talking about your faith got to be in the right place. You want you want to have faith for what you want God to do, but you don't want to have faith for what God called you to go through. Like you don't want to have faith for that. Like I'm just talking about things going in the right place. Then when Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, now watch how Jesus Kill the pride, try to connect to his ambition. Lucifer, he fell to the pride of his ambition, and now he's trying to get Jesus to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus like, nah, bro, I'm going to beat this thing. Amen. He fasted, and afterwards he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, follow my example, Jesus. That's what he basically saying. If thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. In other words, if you are who God say you are, then you should be able to do this. If you listen, you hungry, use your gift to fix your own problems. Like use your anointing to fix your own problems. Like use your faith to provide for your own needs. You got to You can work, right? Go do what you got to do. Like just survive. Like you got to do what you got to do. See? ambition but jesus knew amen i can do that but it's not the right time i'm in a season of fasting right now like so i'm not trying to take away the hunger this is what i'm supposed to be experiencing amen see you trying to feed me and god you trying to feed something and god trying to starve something Amen. But he answered and said, it is written. Now, look, let me stop. The enemy will make you feel insecure about where you are. He said, if you be the son of God, Jesus just received the prophecy. Jesus was at service. The glory hit. Angels came. The Holy Spirit. They saw the dove worship going on. He getting baptized. John the Baptist called him out the crowd. Like, look, you right there, sir. Come up. Let me let me minister to you. Huh? Lay hands on him. Baptized him. The glory hit. 
His purpose was confirmed. And right out that right after that, the heaven said, This is my son. Right after that, the tempter said, If. Amen. The pride of your ambition to pull you into a realm where you feel like you gotta prove what God said. You ain't gotta prove nothing, like. You ain't gotta prove it. If you wait take patiently, God approve it. And listen. God will do a much better job than you will. God will prepare. Listen, God won't even smash them. God will prepare a table for you in the midst of your enemies. Like, have you eaten good? Like, right in their faces, huh? <laughs> Chilling and then bless them. I love you, man of God. God bless you. How you doing? How your church doing? Like, hallelujah. Your church about to break apart. According to the increase. <laughs> and you, how your church doing? Is it, I hope everything's going good. I'm praying for you. I'm going to leave that alone right there. Hallelujah. Come on now. <laughs> Can I use it? Hallelujah. God, I'm telling you, got to do it. I'm telling you, got to do it. Like When I was in the prison, there's people that were sleeping on me. Every time I try to say they try to smash it. Try to, no, no, you don't know. You don't, you know, they try to smash me. When I came home and I was at, I was at certain services, these same people came. Oh, you remember me, brother? Oh, yeah. Yeah, remember I, I, I came, I was doing Bible study in the prison. Amen. Amen. Brother, I praise God for what you're doing in your life. Can you come to our church and can you come give a word to our church? Our youth, they really need you. I say amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. You can prove it. I don't have to prove nothing. Like When we feel like we have to prove it, that means it's pride connected to our ambition. If we really have faith, we can just stand there and trust what God said. God said, I'm just going to stand and watch them manifest it in your own face. Hallelujah. But he said it is written. He stood on the word. Not only did he stand on the scriptures, he was standing on what God said about his situation. It's good to stand on the scriptures. It's even better to stand on the scriptures that God said apply to your situation. Amen. If I want to, I can find the scripture and make it fit what I want to do right now. Listen, the Bible says I can condemn every word. I can do it like. I can dim those words. I can stop their mouths. The Bible says it. Amen. But when you're going through a season of humility, God be like, don't even respond. Like, Don't even respond. I, ain't, I, didn't, I haven't anointed. You are anointed to speak, but I have anointed to you to speak on this situation. Let the angels do it for you. Hallelujah. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. Somebody say new city. Hallelujah. And setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. That's the highest point of the temple. And saith unto them, if you be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and their hands they shall bear thee up. Listen, God's grace is covering you. It's all right to take a little drink. It ain't that bad. It's all right. Sorry to watch that video. You ain't watched that video. You ain't you. You've been doing good. Just reward yourself. It's all right. It ain't that bad. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. If the salvation is of grace, God love you unconditionally. All this time, he ain't gone. You know it's gonna be okay. Nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna get no consequence. The devil is a liar. You know it's not. It's not gonna be any consequences for your bad decisions. You know, God's grace is covering you. If you fall down, the angels will bear you up. You'll be all right. You will be all right. You might reap some things that you sown, but you will be all right. Hallelujah. You might get a little spanking from the father. You Listen, if you don't get no spanking from the father, you don't belong to him. He said any son that belonged to him and he loved, he spank him. And we, uh, you know, he just disciplined. You know, he just tells me I'm wrong. You know, the Bible says he's going to whoop you. The Bible says that he scourges them. That's a whooping. It's okay. You got to whip the kids sometimes. It's all right. 
All right, I'm about to be done. But look, the Bible says that the devil took him up. Now, the reason I want to connect this to ambition, because the good ambition, we're motivated to, to achieve what it is that God called us to achieve. We're motivated to be successful in what God called us to do. Jesus was motivated because every area that he's being tempted is areas that God called him to do. He's not even being tempted with sin. He being tempted with purpose. Stuff he already had access to. Abilities that he had already had on the inside of him. God started testing him with that. God let him in this situation to be tested by the enemy. God let him there to be tested because God wanted to prove him. God want to qualify you. So God is leading you into these situations. It's God's will for you to be confronted with this stuff. It's God's will. God set that up. You know why? Because he's trying to prove you for greater. He's trying to prove you for another dimension. He's trying to prove you for greater anointings. He's trying to prove you for, for prosperity. But he got to trim the fat off the ambition. All right. Now, so Satan took him up. Now, why is this the key? Because the Bible says that the, the pinnacle in the temple is the highest point of the temple. But Jesus' purpose is to be the head of the church. So the pinnacle of the temple is the head or the top part of the church. That was his purpose, but it wasn't his purpose at that time. The enemy trying to get him to enter in something that it wasn't time for. Like the enemy tried to give him a position that it was God's job to give him. So Jesus couldn't receive, receive that exaltation from him. And the third thing it says, again, the devil take him up. Look, he keep trying to take him up. I'm not, I don't, the devil not going to take me up. God, I thank you that you're going to take me up. Amen. Again, the devil taketh him up. And we just wait on God's time and God is faithful. All right. Again, the devil taketh him up into exceedingly high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. That's why I said we deceived by the false prophecies. God is going to do revival. God is going to move powerfully by his spirit. But the devil trying to paint the picture of the kingdom. Listen, let me show you all the glory of the kingdom. Let me show you how it's going to look. Let me show you what you're going to be doing. And try to get pride to connect to our ambition. And we try to start doing stuff before God has even equipped us. But Jesus said, nah, like, I'm going to humble myself and worship God. I'm going I'm to humble myself to where God have me right now. And then Jesus, because he is said that he came out in the power of God and the angels ministered to him. Then Jesus was in a position to help his brethren when they went through the same thing. Peter, Jesus said, this is the purpose. I got to die. Peter said, not so, Lord. I know more than you. I got a better strategy. Let me show you how this do. Jesus said, Peter, fish on that side. Nah, Lord, I'm, I'm nice with the fishing. I've been doing all my life. Now, when it comes to prophecy, I'm going to let you do that part. But when it comes to fishermen, let me, I know what to do. I have this ability. So let me do what I always do. You don't know what you're talking about, Jesus. This is my area of expertise. Like. This is the gifts that God has given me. Jesus said, just this, I know you think you know everything. We fished all night. We tried that already. You know how many times y'all say that? You know how many times we say that? I'd be like, yo, just do this. Man, I tried that. It don't, it don't work. How you know? You ain't even do it long enough. If you had faith, you wouldn't do it one time. It would, it would become a lifestyle. Listen, I, you did say that and this happened. I know what you're trying to do. I sound like when people call me a prophet because all people want to do is accuse you when you tell them a word and, it, and they think it don't come to pass. I don't be missing, man. I don't be missing. I don't be missing. I don't be missing. 
I remember last year at Royal Clough Building. God used this man so powerfully that day. I, I, I never forget it. Y'all remember that? God used this man so powerfully that day. Blessed us. All of us. We all in there in tears. He in tears. Walking. Ah. We made a little tunnel for him like this. Bless him, Lord. He like, ah, Lord. Ah. Yo. Ah, Y'all know. He try to act real militant. When the father get him, he like, ah. I love it, though. That's how it is. You... And you a child of God. When you be in the Father's presence, you just be baby-like. And I remember saying, bro, God is going to take you to another level like Paul. I said, yo, I don't know if you remember this. I remember this because when you just shared today, I said, dang, Lord, that thing came to pass. I said, yo, God is going to get you to a place after this where you see unusual signs and wonders and miracles happening all suddenly. Didn't I say that to you at the building? Every time he give a testimony, what he talk, what he testifying of? Suddenly. He ain't even lay hands on a woman. He just prayed for her. And the lady just, he, I, did you even pray for that? <laughs> he ain't even pray for that. He just praying for her to be, have joy today. And the lady walked away with a cane in her hand. Hallelujah. All suddenly. Come on, give God the glory for that. Use them, Lord. The pride of our ambition. Now, Jesus was in a position because he beat it himself. Y'all all going to beat it. We all going to beat it. We all going to beat it. And then, you know, we're going to help other people beat it. Other people that's gifted, powerful, anointed of God. But they got pride connected to their ambition. We're going to beat it and then we're going to show them how to do it. We're going to lead them out that wilderness. Amen. Jesus was able to, I know y'all like, I'm going long. I'm about to cut it off right now. I ain't even mean to preach this long. I don't know where this came from. Hallelujah. Amen. See, the devil try to, the devil try to take me out and rebuke him in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, listen, oh, this is a good sign. This message is a good sign. I mean that God is determined to get us where we said he was going to get. Didn't we, didn't that. Didn't that, ain't that what the Lord told us he was going to do for 2020? Yeah. Remember we was at uh, uh, Apostle Stewart, Joe, and I said, listen, God is determined to get us there, a year of prosperity. That means it's a year of fruitfulness, and God is determined to get us there. You, God, like, listen, I'm going to get you out your own way no matter what. Like, I'm going to fulfill my promises in your life. Yes, yes Lord. Hallelujah. So help us, Jesus. So Jesus was now able to help Peter in Matthew 16. He said, listen, he started prophesying over Peter. This is your ability. You the rock. You're going to lead the people. You're going to I'm going to use you in a powerful way. Huh? Peter, you a mighty man. You're going to lead your brothers. I'm a I'm a build the whole church off your revelation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Peter was a Peter had that first fruit anointing. Nobody want to step out the boat, Peter, like I go. He, Peter had ambition. He was, he was a risk taker. He a step out like first fruit. Somebody want to step out. Nobody going to say, Peter, I'm going to do it. And gee, I, sink or swim, I'm stepping out. And you know what? It was pride connected to it, but Jesus loved that about Peter. Don't get them. Peter, Jesus loved that about you. Jesus like, listen, I can, I can use that. I can work with that, like. I need some risk takers. Like I, I can work with that. I know I, we gonna work on the other stuff, but I, listen, I need some more people like you on my team. So don't feel condemned. Jesus loved people like that. He loved Peter. He rebuked Peter too, but he loved him some Peter. Peter, you stand right here. He said, "Who do men say I am?" Peter halfway knew the truth. Listen, you, I, you somebody. I think you the Christ. He just stepped out. Like listen, I, if y'all ain't gonna answer the master talking, I'm gonna say something. You know, he halfway got it right, halfway got it wrong, but Jesus loved that about him. He was close enough. Jesus said, listen, I can work with that. I can work with that. In that same moment, Jesus prophesied on all his gifts and his anointing and what his calling was. And right after that, he had to rebuke the devil off of him. Why? Because of the priorities. He says, you're not prioritizing correctly. He said, you don't savor the, what God want to do right now. You making a priority what you want to do right now. 
it's okay for you to do what you want to do, but it's not okay for it to be more of a priority to what God want to do. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put your ambition where it's supposed to be. I talked about David. David was a man at the God's own heart because he chose people over purpose. He understand that his purpose was connected to the people. He didn't want to kill the person to fulfill his purpose. If he would have killed Saul, he would have instantly went into his purpose and he would have became the king right at that moment. Just like God said, he could have set it up for him to enter into his purpose right there. But for him to do it, he would have had to kill people he loved. Peter ain't get that revelation. Like <laughs> He read about David, but he ain't had that revelation. Peter said, listen, if all my brothers forsake you, I'm never going to forsake you. He was being like Lucifer in that moment. He tried to exalt himself against the other stars, his other brothers. He was saying, God, my faith is better than theirs. Like wow. Jesus just said, all y'all going to betray me. He ain't believe what Jesus said. He ain't have faith. He leaned on his own understanding and said, nah, Jesus. I'm not going to do it. You're wrong. He told Jesus he was wrong multiple times. Peter said, kill and eat. Peter, Jesus said, kill and eat, Peter. Peter said, not so, Lord. I ain't doing that. And he didn't do it when Jesus was on earth. Jesus ascended and came in a spiritual form and told Peter. Peter was fasting and everything. Jesus appeared to him and said, eat this stuff. And he told the Lord to his face in a vision in the spiritual realm. No, I'm not doing that. And then, and listen, look at the pride of this. He said, it is written. <laughs> you see? You see how we be filled with wisdom from God, and now we start thinking we know more than Jesus. He told Jesus, no, Jesus, because it's written this way. Amen. But Jesus said, I can work with you. He said, listen. He said, listen, Lord, I'm not going to portray you. Now, this is his brothers. He's called to lead his brothers. Even if they portray you, I ain't going to portray you. Whatever they do, that's on them. I'm following your purpose. And Jesus said, shut up, little boy. And anybody trying to hear all that pride? No, listen, that's how that's how I was. I'm saying it in our language of how we say it, but that's basically what Jesus said. When you're reading the King James, it sounds like, oh, thee is thou, it's Peter. But in our language, Jesus says, shut up, little boy. You, you full of pride. You ain't even got no faith. I said all of y'all gonna betray me. Now you trying to prove to me I'm wrong? That's how it really happened. So now, so then after he resurrected, Jesus had to minister to him about that. He said, you're going to portray me three times in that pride, in that prideful ambition. And then after that, he ministered to him to cover that area. He said, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Then feed my sheep. In other words, he had to correct that area with a pride connected to his ambition to fulfill purpose by sacrificing the people that his purpose is for. His purpose is for his brothers. Why would he sacrifice them to fulfill it? So Jesus had to fix it. Be ambition in doing what I called you to do. Be ambition in, in feeding your brother, not leaving your brother's like. Be ambition in giving life to your brothers, not killing them to try to prove to me you're trying to fulfill something. I don't need you to do that. I need you to stand with your brothers. I need you to love your brothers. I need you to die for your brothers. Don't kill your brothers. Die for them. That's the Jesus swag. Hallelujah. Pride connected to our ambition. Help us, Jesus. This is my notes, and I'm closing with this. In humility, I want to help you. That's all. I want to help. And ambition can be good, but it must be held in check and stewarded. Unchecked ambition becomes an open door for pride. Humility is knowing your place. Let me help you. Number one, submit to the plan. What plan? God's plan. Number two, the leader's plan. Number three, your plan. 
in that order. Submit to the plan. Ambition, all prideful ambition will always have you deviate from the plan. Like, Amen. Number two, pray and seek God. Uh, God is leading by the Holy Spirit. Pray and seek God on that. God show you a vision before you do it. Pray and seek God on that. If you make a habit of checking with God and the Bible says we do all things through Christ. If you make a habit of not just doing it, but doing it through Christ, which means you have to check with the boss before you do it. If you make a habit of that, then your ambition will be in the right place at the right time. Pry to be severed from it. Stay within your right. Stay within your right. What I mean by that is you might have a desire to do it, but do you have the right to do it? You might have the gift to do it, but did, do you have authority to do it? Stay within your right. Because when it's your time, God will give you the right. He'll give you authority to do it. Stay within your right. If you in this ministry and we purpose you to do this, then let all your ambition filter through what we assigned you to do, not what you assigned you to do. You want to do this, but we asked you to do that. So now you want to use your, oh, they rejected me. No, you don't. There's pride connected to your ambition. Just do what we ask you to do first, and then we'll make room for you to do whatever God put in your heart in that order. Stay within your right. Use all your ambition to do your assignment. If we ask you to usher, then prophesy when they come through the door. Right. Don't feel rejected because we don't give you the mic. Right. Use your ambition where you have the right to do it. Like, on, Amen. On, Be diligent in your responsibility. See, Lucifer wanted to exalt itself and take somebody else's responsibility. Listen, the basics of our salvation is that we have to trust that God has anointed somebody else for the job. When you're not anointed, we got to repent and say, God, I can't do it, but I'm trusting that you anointed Jesus to do what I'm not anointed to do. Well, that's practical. We got to live that every day because you ain't anointed to do everything. God ain't appoint you. Even if you got the grace, you ain't appointed to do everything. I'm appointed to help people get free, but it's some people I, I'm not appointed to help them. And I got to know the difference. I got to I got to use my gifts and my diligence and my ambition to succeed where God has given me a responsibility and where he ain't give me a responsibility. Apply all that faith we talked about right there and just stand and trust God to send the right person. God ain't asked you to do it every time. That's you wanting to do that every time. That's you trying to fix everybody. God ain't asked you to do that. He sent Jesus for that. Just stay within the confines of what your responsibility is and your ambition to be perfectly all right. Be mindful of others. Be mindful of others. You want to be ambitious and take the initiative. That's a blessing. But sometimes you could be robbing someone else of their opportunity to grow in that area. You become like Lucifer and you're still killing and destroying. We got to have grace. Everybody ain't going to get it right every time. So we got to have grace. We got to give people room to grow. But in your ambition, you just want to do it for them and you don't even give them no room to grow. Got to give them room to grow. Now, listen, some people, sometimes people just trifling and we need something to get done. And you like, listen, I'm going to take the initiative because ain't nobody else going to take the trash out. So I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm not saying that that's unrighteous, but I'm just saying if we practice these principles, then we'll uh, we'll nine times out of ten. We won't be in pride. We'll be in the right. The last thing I'm going to say is just ask. It only take a second to ask. I'm like, man, ain't nobody take the trash out. Didn't we pick somebody to take the trash out? I can just take initiative. I'm not condemning that. But you know what? I can just ask. Yo, was anybody going to take the trash out? Oh, no. Okay, then I'm going to take it out. 
It, it don't it don't it don't it, it don't kill your ambition. It don't kill your motivation to simply ask because people do things and they don't even ask if somebody else is assigned to do it. You just take it upon yourself to do something and don't even know that leadership has assigned somebody to do it. Somebody got they've been assigned already. But the pride is connected to your ambition and it's really judgment of other people. You're really judging them or their laziness and you assume they're not going to do it. But God never chose you to do it. You don't got to know everything. You don't got to know what everybody need to do. You, listen, what you got to do is enough. Why you got to know what everybody else got to do? What you have to do is enough. God don't tell you everything because you can't handle everything. I'm okay with not knowing everything because I realize when he starts showing me some things, I, I, I it's too weighty. I can't carry it right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for what you've already done. I give you honor, glory, and praise. I thank you that you have us on a righteous path, God. Thank you so much, God, for dealing with us as sons, God, for de delivering us from the deceitfulness of, of glory and false prophecies, God. I thank you, Father God, that I'm not leading us. You're leading us, God. I thank you, Jesus, that you're determined to get us into the places that you prepare for us, God, even if we get in the way, Father. I thank you, Father, that you're not afraid of our dirty places. You're not afraid of our issues. You're not afraid of our ambition or our pride. You're not afraid of that, God. I thank you right now that you're trimming the fat, God. And you're clothing us with a garment of humility. And you're teaching us how to be good stewards like you. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for calling us your sons and giving us the power to be that. I love you so much, God. I thank you for the joy. I thank you for the peace. I thank you for the revelation. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you'll bring into remembrance every needful thing at the right time, at the right moment. You'll bring to remembrance the word of faith. You'll bring to remembrance the word of encouragement. You'll bring to remembrance the joy. You'll bring to remembrance my brother's testimony of peace, even when he's surrounded by the enemy, God. And I thank you that as you bring it to remembrance, Holy Spirit, you'll strengthen us, strengthen us to play our part and play our position in humility. Thank you for ambition, but I thank you for stewardship over what you have given us. I love you and I praise you in Jesus name. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You dismiss. I pray that you have a blessed day. Be filled with peace, love and joy. I love you. Blessings.